Welcome to Digital Asset News, taking top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and bringing on a bite-sized pieces. So today we're going to talk about some uh, interesting stories. Uh, first up, uh, HBO's Real Time with Bill Maher. He did a segment to millions of his viewers where he pretty much just laid out his thoughts on crypto and digital assets. And people were cheering and clapping and really celebrating everything. And uh, I'm just going to here to go over it and tell you, you know, it, uh, it wasn't good and really how we should be treating uh, these people that are really point the finger and just uh, saying, this is a ridiculous market. And it's really gonna encompass what is happening in the NFL, where Trevor Lawrence is the number one draft pick. He's taking his entire signing bonus in cryptocurrency. This is a great article written by John Miltimore. I encourage everybody to follow him. And uh, it just really lays out why if, if you're laughing and jeering right now at crypto digital assets, there's a reason and it's coming fast why you really need to pay attention because if you don't, things are gonna pass you by and it's gonna be uh, pretty upsetting. And there's this article pretty much just lays it out. It's probably one of the best articles I have ever read for crypto and digital assets. So we'll take a look at that, but first let's take a look at the market. So uh, today it is May 2nd, uh, this is Trade the Chain. Take a look at sentiment analysis, I talk about it all the time. Uh, links in the description, but we're at 2.2 trillion. So for everybody who bought the dip, congratulations. Uh, it's like we always talk about here. If if you don't like the price of a of a crypto project, just wait a couple of days. It's like the weather in Houston. If you don't like it, it's going to change. And uh, here we are. We're back to almost all our all time highs, except for Bitcoin. Bitcoin's only at fifty six five, and dominance has slipped uh, a little bit. Uh, and I think money is flowing into alts. That is just how it goes. So things go into Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a gateway crypto, as I call it, and then people get into alts, such as Ethereum, which is almost knocking at three thousand dollars. Binance coin, 620, XRP, watch out, $1.57. And you take a look at these, these seven day averages. I mean, this is massive, 12%, 24%, 21, 38, 44% for Dogecoin. Hey, congratulations all you Dogecoin holders. I don't hold Dogecoin and I've been talking negatively about it, but if it goes up, if it makes money, it makes sense, good for you. Polka dot and everything else and eh, just everything's up just massively today. So it's a, it's a weird day because uh, Wednesday's hump day and Sunday's dump day in, in, in my opinion, but uh, we're doing, we're holding pretty strong. So um, for all the people that are laughing, let me get to those stories. So, oh, before we get to that, I just wanna cover uh, just a little quick update. Turkey, a couple weeks ago, they talked about banning cryptocurrencies for payments. Now they've re they, they're they still in the same course, but they're making progress. So this was just came out uh, yesterday late and uh, the Turkish government has updated the country's crypto regulation. This is in this is published in the official Turkey Gazette. Uh, the official Gazette is like uh, the, the main primary uh, in, in information hub for Turkey and states uh, the new rule adds crypto trading platforms to the list of Entities covered by AML, anti-money laundering, and combating the financing of terrorism regulations. The country's latest expansion of rules covering crypto transactions would take immediate effect. So right now, everybody has to comply. It's already been passed. The government previously said that it plans to establish a central custodian bank to eliminate counterparty risk, among other provisions. So they want to keep some kind of control. They want to have uh, the, the custodians be the banks. All right. So uh, there's a medium. I know some people are not going to agree with that, but uh, hey, sometimes you got to crawl before you can run. Let's see how that works out. I don't know. Turkey's central bank recently banned the use of crypto for payments and two Turkish crypto exchanges, uh, Thodex and uh, Vebitcoin, I guess, halted trading abruptly and are now being investigated for fraud. One, I think, was mismanagement. And one was just an outright fraud. So there is progress being made over there in Turkey. So great. Uh, this is good news, in my opinion, just uh, not fantastic news. All right. So let's take a look at what is going on here. So this was, let me just refresh this. So Bill Maher, if you don't know, in America, he's a uh, comedian. I use that term loosely. Some people love him, some people hate him, but uh, it doesn't really matter. And uh, he went on a tirade for like eight minutes straight about just how awful crypto and digital assets were. And what was striking to me was, you know, I thought I would hear some chuckles and a little bit of uh, laughter or clapping, but man, it was, it was like over joyness of people like really hating on crypto. One thing that was interesting though, was that when he, when he brought up Dogecoin, people were clapping like crazy. So, hey, you know what? If uh, that's what it takes for people to be happy, so much the better. But he pretty much has laid it out and said, I don't believe in it. I think it's stupid. You don't understand. I don't understand. And that's just how it is. And um, people shouldn't be involved into it. And it's just really awful. And I thought it was kind of a, uh, a sucky thing to say. But then I just, again, 
one of my fatal flaws, which is I always think that people are like me and they'll do all their research and they really get into it. But sometimes it just takes people time. And that's what it is. I, my story, uh, if you don't know, my son brought, brought home Bitcoin. Uh, on a, he said he, at, at his school, he had some kid who was going to sell him 500 Bitcoin for 500 bucks. This was early, early. And I was like, that is so stupid. I didn't say stupid. I said, that's crazy. I don't think that's going to that's gonna work. It's like, oh, okay, I just thought I'd run it by you. Now here we are, right? So it just takes people a little bit of time. So for Bill and for everybody else out there who doesn't get it yet, it's okay. You know, it's all right. Uh, I didn't get it initially first either. But once you do your research and take a look down, then you kind of get it. And if we take a look back at people who just didn't get it, besides good old Rob here at Digital Asset News, we can take a look at somebody like Jordan Belfort and uh, the Wolf of Wall Street. He said, hey, this was in 2018. He says Bitcoin shouldn't exist. He's baffled by the price, warns it's a scam. That was in 2018. Fast forward to 2021, he did a, a video where he talks about, well, this is why the government will destroy Bitcoin. And then he comes out, you know, just a couple of months ago, March 24th and said, hey, um, it's gonna be awesome. And uh, it's gonna soar up to $100,000. And um, so it's just one of those things. And then on top of that, I mean, you'll have even like JP Morgan who are, you know, they are, that's all they do, finances, right? And I'm not gonna I'm not gonna poo-poo all over um, Bill Maher because he's a comedian and he shouldn't talk. I mean, look look at me. I mean, my history is uh, uh, marketing, healthcare, and uh, just small businesses. And here I am talking to you about it. It's like it's not like I am a cryptologist or I'm a programmer, but it's something I believe in. And so if Bill Maher doesn't get it, it's not because I'm gonna hate on him because oh you're a comedian, how dare you? It's just that you got to do a little more research. That's all it really comes down to. Just like J.P. Morgan, and these are the guys that are in finances. And they, this is the nice little timeline. 2015, virtual currency will be stopped. Uh, 2017, uh, Bitcoin's a fraud. It's a fraud. It'll never work up. Now he gets warmed up to it in 2020. Then 2021, he says investors should invest one percent of their of their portfolio. And now just recently, uh, what a week ago, he said, hey. JP Morgan's gonna uh, actively offer <laughs> manager of Bitcoin funds for you guys. So look, everybody, everybody has their own learning curve. And um, the only thing that, that concerned me about this video was just how wholeheartedly people were like, yes, this is fantastic. And yes, we don't like crypto and it's dumb and you're right. And you get into that group think and that is the most dangerous thing. So like even on this channel, like, I mean, we could all be in group think. We all think, that, oh, well, people are just like us, right? People just know it and get it and everything else. That is a prime example of how people just don't get it and just don't understand right now what's going on. So when people say, ah, we're not early, like like in the fifth inning or sixth inning or whatever they say, that's not the truth. There, there's people out there that just don't understand. And really, it's, it's up to us to not reiterate the stories of the Bill Mars of the world and the Charlie Mungers and, and the Warren Buffetts, but to take a look at, hey, look at these other institutions that are getting in. Look at all these people that are getting into it. Look at all these, uh, you know, old world in investments. I mean, you have like like a, a mass mutual or, or a Liberty, or I mean, even even Tesla's into it right now, even though it's a, you know a, a better, more technology uh, driven company. These are the things that we should be talking about and. It's not like we should be looking down on people, like, how dare you say that? We're not gonna get anywhere with that. Uh, unless, you, unless you're like me and you got some friends who are just hard-headed, you just go, listen, idiot, this is really what it is. You can say that's like personal friends, but people are kind of like, I really get it. Sometimes it's just better just to, you know, just bring them into the fold and explain it and go, I see what you, what, what you mean there. Uh, I understand I was the same way, but here's what I got and here's what it all comes down to as well as crypto and digital assets. So that's just one of the, that's just the first part. And this really will come down to articles that we should be sharing. And this is one of those articles. So people, like I've always said in this channel, like I wasn't marketing for a long time, they have to see things seven to 10 times before they actually just get it or they buy it or they buy into it. And this is just one story uh, that makes a lot of sense. So Trevor Lawrence, Clemson, number one NFL draft pick, NFL for people who are outside the United States. It's football, not soccer. I know it sounds weird, but that's what it is. So Lawrence's signing bonus will come in crypto. And, and we had covered this a couple of weeks ago because he signed a deal with, with uh, Blockfolio or uh, one of those, it's in here later. And I, I just thought it was like a separate deal that they're gonna pay him in crypto for talking about crypto. But now he's taking his entire signing bonus uh, which is $22.5 million. $22.5 million. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. 
And what was interesting to me was that right here it states that the crypto coins he asked for, the crypto coins such as Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Doge. Hey, so there you go. He's taking in a Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Doge. Nothing else. I mean, he might be, but this is what probably the uh, the majority. And moving forward, this is the part that we really should be talking about. Just to talk about people in society, people in the public eye who get it and are taking their payments in crypto. So in May 2019, Panthers offensive tackle and Bitcoin trailblazer like that. Russell Oakham requests to be paid in Bitcoin. So when he was saying this, this was in 2019, mind you, when it wasn't even that hot of a hot of a thing, but he got it. And people, I remember these articles were like, that's stupid. Why would he do that? He can just take dollars. That's going to go down because it's in a bubble. Blah. This is the great part. Oakham's decision made him one of the highest paid players in the NFL, the result of Bitcoin's meteoric rise. When Oakham, Oakham I don't know how to say his name, you'll probably correct me, made his demand, Bitcoin was trading around eight grand. $8,000. And today the price is about 55000 And imagine when it goes up to 150000 which is what I predicted. These types of stories are the ones that don't get talked about a lot. The first story gets talked about a ton. He wants his, his uh, salary in Bitcoin. And then every time it goes down, you hear people go, ah, it goes down, what a moron. These are the stories we should be talking to all our friends and family and colleagues and be like, you know what? This guy Oakham. He got it eight grand and now it's $55,000. And uh, as it goes on later, it's gonna go up. So just remember that number, $8,000. Bitcoin will go up, crypto will go up, digital assets will go up and down. That's just how it is. That was the original price. Anyhow, this is where it gets great. Some economists have warned that crypto is simply a bubble waiting to pop, arguing they have no intrinsic value. And the reason why I like this part right here is because John here has a great gift of showing both sides of the angle. I haven't read all this stuff. I'm gonna, I'm gonna probably actually do it. But uh, I like this because it says like, well, here's one side, here's another side, and here's a counter argument. It's great. So, 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 so Bitcoin looks like it's really is a bubble in multiple senses. Paul Krugman famously said in 2015, when it was trading for roughly 300 bucks. Again, you don't hear that too often, but we should. The economist said it's in a bubble of 300 bucks. And then some gold bugs will say the same stupid stuff too, but they're just shills for their, their Bitcoin fund or their uh, gold fund, excuse me. <laughs> a lot has changed. And I think that's true. Hedge funds have piled on, including investment guru, Kathy Wood, CEO of ARK Invest, corporations are going on the, on the action, Tesla, da, da, da. And they recently reported 101 million profit. All the things we have talked about uh, ad nauseum on this channel. I just say it if you're new to the channel. And then it says, don't be surprised if your local Chinese restaurant or steakhouse is now accepting Bitcoin cash. Interesting. In fact, survey shows, and I did not, I must have missed this. More than a third of small and medium-sized businesses in the U.S. accept crypto as payment for goods and services. That's uh, a lot. I need to take a look at that. Surveys can be, you can take a very small sample and go, well, a third of them do it. So, but you're like, well, what's the sample size? 500? Okay. But it is, it is interesting that even a third on this survey, uh, they were accepting cryptocurrencies. So why? The question is why? And we know why, but it's, it's good to get this information when people ask you why. Why? Why is that? So I think there is enormous risk we are running. Economist and former Harvard president Lawrence Summers recently observed. I think there's a real possibility that within the year, we're going to be dealing with the most serious incipient inflation problem we've faced in the last 40. And if we've talked about this before, we'll talk about it again. Uh, quantitative easing or money printing is at an all-time high. We're going to see a lot more of it. So when you have that, you can't keep printing money for that long. I don't care about the helicopter money and the uh, monetary theory. I, I just don't see how you can just print uh, to oblivion and go, it'll be fine. It's, it, that's not how it works. So in the last, and to finish up, I think which really makes it interesting, in his famous work, The uh, Denationalization of Money, economist F.A. Hayek noted that one of the primary lessons of human history from ancient Rome to the 20th century is that governments debase currency. So every time you hear about the gold bugs talk about, well, gold's been around forever and it's going to be great. It's going to replace everything. Sure, I own gold and silver. Why don't you own a little Bitcoin? Especially if, if you're going to talk about this, you know that all fiat has gone to zero. All fiat in, in the in uh, for in the entire timeline of history has gone to zero at some point, all of it. So what makes you think 
that any of this fiat is going to keep going on forever. Just can't. I don't know when it is. It's like I'm saying tomorrow. Don't get me wrong. It's going to be around for forever or for a long time, but not that long. And then uh, he argues that governments can't uh, control themselves. Once lawmakers realize their control over money can serve as not just a medium of exchange, but as a source of power and ill-gotten wealth, they inevitably manipulate currency in a way that makes its harm. There's only one solution. The Nobel laureate concluded, I don't believe we should ever have good money again before we take the thing out of the hands of government because we can't take it violently out of the hands. All we can do is by some sly roundabout way introduce something they can't stop and that my friends ladies and gentlemen is exactly what cryptocurrencies and digital assets really are built for well mostly cryptocurrencies and you got okung and lawrence now even jordan belfort and a lot of different people just realizing okay okay this is what we were missing this is what we really should be doing and i think that is what makes crypto great so when we talk about these stories you know you're going to get a lot of traction on on bill maher but just remember when we talk to these people it's just because they're ignorant not that ignorant is a bad word just that they don't understand first of all people don't even know uh that, that the history of money they don't understand what money really is what it's really backed by uh you know just everything about it i mean heck just simple finances people understand so when you talk to people just realize that if you're here right now you're in the right place at the right time cut them a little slack and just try to explain it to to them as best you can and uh for that i would just recommend this website no i'm just kidding no really i do that thing spinning on my head dan teaches crypto.com it's 100 percent free so if you don't really want to explain to your friends and family and everyone else just send them there it's, it's free they sign up i don't spam anybody i created it free for this specific reason and first of all because people in like sub-saharan africa and bangladesh and, and different parts of europe they can't afford a, a bunch of money so just come on here and learn all about it that you that you possibly can in a condensed simplified way and then i've even got stuff like bitcoin elevator pitches and you got videos about you know what is crypto and digital assets how to actually work it how it kind of works together project reviews everything you really want to know and that really is the big thing so that's all I have for today. Uh, lastly, I will say this. Um, we're going to do a, a, a live video today. There was a great question, which was, uh, which was Rob, what would you hold? What should, five to 10 cryptos you would hold for the duration for your kids and for your grandkids. And since I have both, uh, I put this uh, together. So it's going to be live. Alex Mascioli should be joining. Uh, we'll see how, uh, how his schedule permits as he's in, living up in Puerto Rico. And we'll do this live and we'll talk about my five cryptos and um, how I see things going as far as like what I really want to hold on to for the real, real long haul. All right, so that's it. So uh, first of all, thanks for sticking with me. I appreciate it. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. That always helps. Consider subscribing. A lot of things we talk about, time sensitive. And, uh, you know, you don't miss anything. So that's it for today, for this one. And uh, hopefully I'll see you later for this new video.